Obsidian is a flexible note-taking app that goes beyond traditional note-taking tools that are commonly used. Obsidian offers hundreds of plugins and themes to tailor and adapt to the way that you think and operate. And today I'm excited to share how you can get up and running with Obsidian for both personal and business use. Okay, so before you go ahead and dive in and download Obsidian, consider subscribing if you haven't done so already or if you're new to this channel, and that way you'll stay updated with actionable videos and tutorials designed to equip you with the skills, knowledge, and tools to help your small business thrive online. And with that happy note out of the way, let's go ahead and set up your second brain and level up your note taking with Obsidian. Okay, so let's get started with Obsidian for flexible note taking that adapts to the way that you operate and think. Now the first thing that we're going to do is navigate up to pricing. And it's important to note that Obsidian is completely free for personal use. However, if you want to use Obsidian for commercial use, you will need to purchase a paid plan. And both these options provide the same features. Okay, so what we're going to do is go ahead and use Obsidian for personal use. To do that, I'm going to navigate down and click on Download Obsidian. And I'm using a MacBook, so I'm going to go ahead and download for Mac. Okay, so I'm going to head over to my desktop. And here's the download. So I'm going to install the Obsidian app by dragging this into Applications. Now let's open up Applications and locate Obsidian. And just like that, we're ready to get started with Obsidian from the desktop app. Now you can also download and use Obsidian for mobile. However, for the purpose of today's tutorial, we're just going to use the desktop app. Okay, so once you have downloaded and set up Obsidian, what we want to do is navigate down and create a new vault. Now think about a vault as a folder used to organize and manage your notes. I'm going to go ahead and click on create, then come down and add your vault name. I'm going to add business ideas. Then come down and what we're doing is creating a local vault. So what you want to do is choose a location that you want to add your new vault to. I'm going to select browse and then click on documents and then come down and click on open. Then come down and click on create. And here we are inside our new vault, business ideas. And as you can see, we have this untitled note that has automatically been added. If we want to add an additional note, simply navigate up to new note. And as you can see, we now have two untitled notes. For this first note up here, I'm going to click here and then navigate over to untitled and call this products for Shopify. And then I'm going to hit enter. And with my first note titled products for Shopify, I want to add product ideas that I can sell through my Shopify site. So I'm going to go ahead and add a few ideas. Okay, so for the purpose of today's tutorial, I've quickly gone ahead and added three ideas for products I want to sell on Shopify. Now I'm going to navigate over to this note here and I'm going to call this SaaS product. Now what I can do if I hit enter is simply change the text size in markdown by using hashtag. So if I go ahead and use one hashtag, then type in my note, you can see that this note has a heading size similar to the heading up here. Now if I hit enter and type in two hashtags and the next note, you can see the text size is even smaller. And you can create even smaller text notes by adding more hashtags. So I'm going to hit enter and type in three hashtags and my next note. And as you can see, the text is even smaller, but I want this text to be paragraph text. So I'm going to navigate up here and remove this hashtag and do the same with these notes so that my text display as normal. And I'm happy with that. Now, as you can see, I now have two notes within my vault business ideas. Now let's go ahead and locate this vault in our documents. And as you can see inside documents, I have the vault business ideas. If I double click here, that's going to show me my two notes, products for Shopify and SaaS products. Now obsidian files are markdown files, which means these basic text notes not only can be opened inside obsidian, but you can also open these files inside other applications. For example, if I come down and click open with, I can open this markdown file with the text editor. And that's going to open up this MD file inside my text editor. Okay, so I'm going to exit out of this. Okay, so let's head back to the Obsidian application where we left off. 
Now, like I mentioned at the beginning of this tutorial, Obsidian is not just a traditional note-taking app. What you can do is leverage internal note linking. This allows us to link relevant notes together, like linking the way that you think and connect information. What this does is allows you to jump between your different notes seamlessly, which is similar to the way that your brain works. Okay, so how does internal note linking work? Well, first let's navigate up to this note up here, products for Shopify. And then what I can do is navigate over here and add double brackets and then click over here and close with double brackets. And then I can click here. And as you can see, that's going to create a separate note. If I navigate over here, I now have a new note for CRM platform. That's because if I go ahead and click on products for Shopify, I added a backlink or internal note here that allowed me to connect a new note. If I click over here and simply click on this link, that's going to take me to this note. I'm going to quickly add my idea for the CRM platform under this note. Okay, so as you can see, I've quickly gone ahead and created a note about the CRM platform that I want to create for service based businesses. Now, remember, I talked about this briefly in products for Shopify. So what I want to do is add and link. So add a backlink that directs back to products for Shopify. So as you can see, I've added this note. Then I also added as planned in and I'm going to hit space and double brackets and come down and I'm going to select products for Shopify. Now, if I click out of here and then I click on this backlink, that's going to take me to the note products for Shopify. Again, if I click in here and then click on CRM platform, that's going to take me back to the CRM platform note. So as you can see, we now have a backlink on each of these notes. These notes are linked together so I can seamlessly jump between each of these notes to allow me to understand what I was talking about in the past in terms of business ideas. Now again, back inside products for Shopify, I have three products down here. So maybe I want to create three individual notes that connect back to this note here. So as you can see down here, I want to create an ebook for helping service-based businesses transform online. So I'm going to hit double bracket here and then close next to ebook with double brackets and then leave that for now. And I'm also going to do the same for content calendar because this is another idea for a product that I want to sell on Shopify. So I'm going to navigate over here and hit double brackets again and then close those brackets next to calendar and then click over here. Now at the moment, these are just reminders. I haven't actually created individual notes that connect to these potential backlinks. At the moment, it's essentially just a placeholder. However, if I want to create notes for ebook as well as content calendar, all I need to do now is click here and that's going to add the new ebook note as you can see over here. And then if I click back on products for Shopify and then navigate down and click on content calendar, that's going to add another note for content calendar. And I can simply link back to products for Shopify if I like by adding. This was a digital product that I thought about in Again, double brackets, and I have the option to link these different notes. I'm going to come down and click on products for Shopify, and I'm happy with that. And again, if I click on products for Shopify, that's going to take me to the notes products for Shopify. So I hope you can see how backlinks or internal links work when it comes to creating notes. This powerful activity allows you to seamlessly jump between notes and organize all your information without being structured. So with these backlinks, these internal links between your notes, you can slowly build a knowledge base, a personal or commercial knowledge base. Now, just quickly before I get back to this video, I just want to mention my all-in-one digital playbook that you guys might be interested in called Go Digital Now, the ultimate small business playbook. This dynamic book took me a year to create and is ideal for small business owners, new and existing, that are looking for a clear-cut digital roadmap for setting up the right tools, systems, activities and strategies so that you can absolutely dominate online. I will add a link in the description below this video if you want to learn more about Go Digital now. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get back to this video. Okay, so now we want to briefly talk about linked mentions as well as unlinked mentions. To access this, simply navigate up to the top right hand corner and click on expand. And this is where you can see linked mentions. For example, with this note, products for Shopify, if we navigate over here, you can see content calendar links to products for Shopify and that links back. So these are linked mentions. Again, if I click on content calendar, that's going to take me to this post over here, which also links back to products for Shopify. Same with the CRM platform. 
if I click on CRM platform, that's gonna take me to this note where I also mention products for Shopify, which is a linked mention. Again, I can click on that mention and that's gonna take me to that note and where I mentioned that backlink, which points back to products for Shopify. Again, I'm gonna click on this linked mention and that's gonna take me back to products for Shopify, which highlights this linked mention. Now, for example, if I navigate over to eBooks, I'm gonna type in as mentioned in products for Shopify. And as you can see, I've got products for Shopify here, but I haven't linked this text. I haven't added a backlink. Now, if I navigate back over to products for Shopify and then navigate over to unlinked mentions and click here, you can see that with ebook, ebook here, which links over to our ebook this note here, we have one unlinked mention. And then we have it down here as mentioned in products for shop. And I can choose to link this and turn it into a linked mention. It will take time before you get comfortable with internal linking, but I hope you can see how Obsidian adapts to the way that you think and operate through the use of backlinks. Now, if I navigate over to notes over on the right hand side, and if I right click, I have a few options. I can open a new tab, open to the right. So for example, if I click on open to the right, that's gonna open up both these notes. Again, I can navigate over here and right click. I can open up a new window, make a copy, move file to, and then these other options down here. I'm gonna click out of that. Now, if we navigate up to the search bar, we can also search for our specific notes, and we can also click on files, and that's gonna take us back here where we can create new notes. We can also create a new folder, and then we can view the way that we manage our notes. If we navigate over to the left, we can click on collapse to open a full screen interface for our notes. Then we can also navigate down and open graph view. If we click here, that's gonna allow us to open a graph view. Okay, so I'm actually going to exit out of this and then close this and then navigate back over to graph view. And you can see how your notes connect inside your vault. For example, products for Shopify is connected to ebook, content calendar, and CRM platform. If I navigate over to content calendar, that's just connected with products for Shopify. If I navigate over to SaaS product, that note is currently not connected through backlinks. So this gives you a visual representation of your notes. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is navigate down to settings, and here you can manage all your core plugins over on the left-hand side. For example, if we click on backlinks, we have the option to show backlinks in document by default when opening new tabs. And we also have these other options down here. Now you can also install additional core plugins by clicking here. And for example, I could enable audio recorder. I'm gonna turn that on. And that's gonna allow me to record audio and save as attachment. If we navigate down further, we have these other options in terms of enabling and disabling these core plugins. And what I'll do is add a more advanced tutorial which will dive deeper into core plugins and community plugins. However, in saying that, the way that Obsidian is set up by default is more than sufficient enough for most people. Again, you have these other basic settings up here and then you also have access to community plugins. If we click here, we first need to turn on community plugins. Now, community plugins that are developed by other people, like other software you install, could potentially cause data integrity and security issues. So it is important to keep in mind plugin security before activating and accessing community plugins. Okay, so I'm gonna navigate down to turn on community plugins and then click on browse to browse community plugins. And this is where you can search for and install community plugins that are developed by other people. For example, you can install tasks. If you wanna manage your tasks inside Obsidian, you can also add a calendar, which is a simple calendar that integrates directly inside of Obsidian and then you have more tools down here. You can install a checklist, add a day planner, and then if we navigate down further, we can install these other plugins. However, like I mentioned, we're not gonna dive too deep into plugins in this tutorial, and we'll cover this in a more advanced tutorial. Okay, so that is everything that I wanted to cover to help you get started with Obsidian for personal and commercial use. And there we have it guys, that is it for this essential guide for getting started with Obsidian. Now if you have any questions about Obsidian or this tutorial, make sure to pop them down below. And with that said, thank you so much for watching this tutorial all the way through to the end. If you got value, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to this channel, and that way I'll see you in the next video. Take care guys.